is we're going to do a similar thing that we did with grid views, except we're going to do it with details views. And um, detail view adds the little bit extra um, complexity due to the fact that you are able to insert in a detail view while you're not able to in a grid view. And that adds, that's just a little twist that makes some things uh, a little more difficult. So let's pull down the example that we had from last time and look at what we have done. And one thing that you will find is that um, in terms of basic functionality, basic structure, the details view is going to work very similar to the grid view. Again, with the twist that you're able to insert with a details view. So here is the example from last time. Let's look at what we were looking at last time, which was what? It was um, division list. And sort of quickly review. Fresh, all right. It might freeze up. Okay. So I call create new. Um, I right click on the data connection and then add a new connection. Right. Right click, add connection, that's it. I'll remember this by the end of the semester. And I pick my database. But it doesn't always work. It seems like I have to have my access open and then I have to save it before. Okay. All right. So I can. I actually forgot what I was going to do. <laughs> I think I was going to look at the SQL data source. I picked that I want to deal with the division table, and I clicked advance and said that I wanted to generate an insert, update, and delete statement. Uh, we can click back to custom and see that as well. Update, insert, and delete. Those going by the statements that I talked about the time before uh, for the format of the insert, update, and delete statements. So we have those three possibilities. Uh, so this is, this is no different than doing the other method, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Because I was a little confused. I was like going, I was like thinking you had to go to the no, 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 no. The, the, 
the, the other way, I'm going to tempt fate here, <laughs> where you specify that, this just is the easy way. It does it for you. If you do it this way, it's no different. You just type it in yourself. Yeah. All right. The other thing we had to do is we had to tell the grid view that it's okay to uh, enable editing and enable deleting. Uh, those are gone, notice from before, because we converted that into a template column. If you notice enable editing, you might think it would be checked, but because we made it a template column, the check is gone. All right. Kind of weird, but I didn't make this up. We talked about template columns last time, and in a nutshell, template columns are whenever you have something that you want to handle differently than the default way of handling things. So, for example, when we originally wrote this, there was no validation whatsoever. All right? Now there is validation. All right? We got that by creating a template column for a few different things, the abbreviation, and we change the edit template column to have the validator. Likewise, the full name we change for that to have uh, a validator. And finally, we wanted to put in a JavaScript confirm when we go to delete, so we change that to a template column. So in short, when you want to do something different than the default behavior allows, you convert it to a template column. All right. I'm kind of going through this real quickly because I want to get into the new stuff. Um, <coughs> last but not least, we made some changes to the CS file. And the CS file we did a little bit of checking for, for um, exceptions if we tried to delete the row. And we wrote sort of a user-friendly error message that, again, a good error message ought to explain to the user what happened. Was their data saved or not? Was their data deleted or not? Yes or no? And then to give a, pro a probable reason of why it happened. And finally, give them some information about what they could do to correct that. All right. Lastly, um, what was I going to say? Uh, we need to tell the framework that we handled that exception. So therefore, we set that exception flight to true, saying, eh, we got this. Now keep in mind that we phrase it in a way to say this is a probable cause of this because there's a possibility that other things could have gone wrong. Namely, there could have been a the database exclusively open would be one example of that. All right. Um, so we phrase it as that there's a probable cause. We don't speak definitively. And then we give them some notion of the action that they should take, you know, See if there's any faculty for this division. If not, try again later. And if you still have the error, contact the database administrator. And we could give an email or whatever. All right. We should probably do the same thing in the row updated uh, method. Remember that just by the past tense of the verb here, deleted, that means that this occurs after the deletion was attempted. So after the deletion was attempted, we go and we validate if there's any exceptions, and then we display our error message. Now, we can go and go back here and do the same thing for on row updated, which would be a good idea to do. We're going to find the same thing in a details view, by the way. And we're going to have the extra event of on row inserted. So I create a new event. And 
I can then go in and put almost identical code here. The only difference being that we're not talking about a deletion, we're talking about an update. Therefore, I'll say something like division not updated. Probable cause database maintenance is occurring. Try again later, or contact the DBA, or whatever. If this error persists, contact DBA. That should be good enough. All right, so now we're going to do the same thing with details view. Now remember, details view deals with just one row of the database at a time. And we're going to do the same thing like we did with the grid view. With the grid view, remember, even if there are other tables that are used, if we're maintaining it, we're only going to pick that one table. So I'm going to create a link in the grid view to the second page. I'm going to make a page that has a grid view. Now keep in mind that I'm doing this. Normally you wouldn't necessarily have to allow for editing on the grid and editing in a detail view. But I want to show you both methods of it, all right, so that you understand. So I'm going to create a second way to edit these things that you would need both ways if you were doing this for your project, for example. You could either pick using the details view or picking the grid view. But I'm going to go in here and I'm going to edit the columns. And I'm going to delete division ID. And I'm going to choose to add a hyperlink field. All right, and I'm going to put the division ID in the URL, and division details dot ASPX question mark ID equals braces, zero braces. What that's going to do is that link is going to be to the page deta uh, division details.aspx and it's going to pass on the query string the ID. We need that ID to bring up the one row that we want to edit. So we use that row, uh, that ID number, to pull up the proper row in the division table. And the text field will just make the division ID. So now when we run this, details ID equals 2. Gee, that's kind of a small column, right? How would I fix that? There's a couple ways to fix it. I probably would go into my CSS and make the TRs, or I'm sorry, the TDs have a certain width. Or the THs. doesn't really matter which one I have. I'll say width I'll give it a minimum width. I'm a big fan of the minimum width. Minimum width of uh, 50 pixels, let's say. All right, so it made it a little bit bigger. And I'll do TD, text align, 
and center. Again, I can do this because I'm aware of the HTML that is being produced. All right. Remember, your server-side code, when the day is done, it produces just plain old HTML for your browser to consume. All right. And if you know that, then you can write the CSS code for it. So, ah, uh, there, that looks better. Now, all I have to do is write the second page. All right, so I will go in and create a new page. And I'll call it Division Details. ASPX. I'm going to select a master page. I'm going to place code in a separate file. I click add. That's the master page I want to use. And there I go. Alright. Now, I'm going to go in to here and I'm going to put instead of a grid view, I'm going to put a details view, and I'm going to put a SQL data source in here. Okay, so I'm now going to go in here, configure data source, pick my connection string, Still going to pick the division table, pick everything in it, click advanced. I'm going to pick where, all right, and I want where division ID equals the value from the query string. If you remember, when I created the link, I said the link was to the page, division details, ASPX, ID equals something. And the ID was the value of that particular row's ID. So that's the link that's created. So when it comes to this page, I need to know the ID that I want to pull up. So that is going to be on the query string. And the field is called ID. I have to click add. And there you go. I can test it. Alright, looks like it brought it up correctly. And I can finish. Next thing I have to do is I have to go and I have to bind my details view to that SQL data source. Alright. Now, notice that because there I created an insert, update, and delete. There's those little check boxes indicating should I enable insert, update, and delete. Because remember, you could do that programmatically. You could check to see who the user is. And we haven't done any of that yet, but I promise by probably the end of this week we will do it to keep someone from able to, to keep someone who's not logged on from being able to edit this. But for now, we're just going to let everyone do it. And I can click Insert, Edit, and Delete. Now, I'm going to set this as my start page because I have to go to this page first, right, to click on the one that I want to edit. So I go and run this. I click on this. I go to that page. I click on Edit. And... I can make whatever change I want. If you notice, it behaves real similar to the grid view did, except you're only dealing with one row at a time. So when would you use one versus the other? For division, because there's only a handful of fields, you probably would use a grid view, right, to do the editing and deleting. For, for, a, <coughs> for a table that had a whole bunch of columns, though, 
maybe you display some of them in the grid view, and you click a link to go to a details view to edit them if there's a whole bunch of columns in the table. I can hit update, and boom, it gets updated. Now, we're back to the same old issues we had before, though. Edit. There's no validation, right? Because that's a default behavior. The default behavior of these works very similar to the default behavior of a grid view. So if I clear out that abbreviation and click update, boom, I get the error. Good news is, is we already know how to fix this, right? We fix this the same way as we fixed it in the grid view. We make it a template column and add a validator. All right? Likewise, if I were to try to delete something, I get the ugly error again. Good news is we already know how to fix this. Would create a, uh, would convert that to a template column, would put in the little snippet of client side coding, and then we would put on the on deleted event the code that we had before. So there's an on deleted event, on updated event, and on inserted event, just like there was with the grid view. Well, the on inserted is a new one because there are no inserts on a grid view, but the other two are the same. So other than that, the grid view is the same as the details view. All right. Questions about this? Let's go and do a couple of these. All right. We won't do everything, but I'll do a couple of these changes just to review them. Um, Shoot, I might as well do them all, right? You know, just to review. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a confirm when we try to delete. How do we do that? We go and edit columns. And I'm going to make this template field Oh, it's already a template field. I guess that automatically happens. So that's one difference. I'm a little confused, but that's okay. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm on the wrong page. No wonder. I want to be on this page. All right. I'll go here, and I'll edit the columns, edit fields. And I'll make that into a template field. I'm actually going to make these two other ones into a template field. I might as well convert all of them to a template field right off the bat. So I'm going to make abbreviation, full name, and the commands a template field. So I've already done that, so I can do my editing. I'm going to go and change. I'm going to edit the templates. For my command, and I'm going to go and edit this link to on client click. Does anyone remember what I did here? I want to pop up a, a box in JavaScript that says, are you sure you want to delete? And ask yes or no, OK or cancel. That is known as a confirm box. So return, confirm, are you sure, are you sure? I'll just do that. The return takes the answer. To the question and passes it back to the event. If it gets a value of OK, it will continue with the event and try to delete. If you answer no, it won't. It'll cancel out the deletion. OK, that's one template I've changed. The other templates. I'm going to go and change the abbreviation. And the abbreviation, I'm going to go and add a required field validator. Into the edit template. And the error message is B, boss standard abbreviation.
control to validate, of course, is that text box. I'm going to do the same thing to the full name. message I want to have that I will have to set the control to validate. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to create the insert, uh, I'm sorry, the item edited and item delete, item edited and item deleted methods. And I'm just, I'm going to put the uh, similar code in, all right, that I did in the other one. So I could go to the source view here of this guy. And on the details view, I can say on item updated equals, give it a new event, on item deleted, give it a new event. Okay. So I'm going to copy almost the same code. Hmm. Maybe I cut instead of copied. Because there's nothing in the row deleted event anymore. I ruined my beautiful error message too. That's the tragedy here. So I'll just I'll just replace it with that ugly error message. All right, so I'm going to copy in to the code behind item deleted, item updated. I'm missing the label error that was on the other page, so I'll go and add it to this guy. All right, and we should be back in business with this. So now, if I go and run this, All I essentially did is repeated everything, all the tweaks that I made on the grid view, I, repeat, I repeated on the details view. I put the validation in, I put the nice error message in, in, and so on. So if I go to this division and try to delete it, it will tell me probable cause database maintenance is occurring. I didn't get the confirmation message. I'll have to look. I'll have to look to see what I messed up there. If I go to edit this and I blank this out, I get the nice validation message. Okay. Let's see why the confirm delete is not working. Go to edit templates. On client click, return, confirm, are you sure? Oh, I missed a quote there. All right. How could I have told that, that I missed a quote there, without looking at it?
click delete, nothing happens. If I go and view the console, ooh, where do you see it here? Tells me unterminated string constant on line 88, column 70, I think that says. I could look at the source for it. And if I looked hard enough, line 88, column 70, I could see that I am missing a quote in there. Okay? That's the thing about browsers. Um, web browsers are very resilient software. If there's a error, either in HTML or JavaScript, um, depending on the kind of error it is, it might not stop everything from happening. It might just go ahead and it doesn't know how to do that piece, so it will go ahead and do the other pieces that it knows. And that's both good in a way and, and bad in a way. It would be nice if, like, it was like other programming languages and just everything stopped and you got an error that was clear that that was the, the problem. But you don't. It ignored that error. It went ahead and it just, um, you know, um, it just acted like that confirm wasn't there. So now if I try to delete it, I should get the confirmation. Sure, cancel, and it doesn't even try to delete it. Okay. Now, everything's okay with this, and I think we can see how it works, and that's pretty good. And this would be useful if we, again, had more fields and we weren't using the grid view to do this. But the problem comes when we want to go and insert. All right? Because watch how we have to create a new division. All right? We come to this page right now. And it says create, there's nothing that says create a new division, right? We have to go in and edit an existing division and then click new. And then we have the ability to add in a new division. And I can type in uh, math and science and click insert. Ooh, ugly air. We're going to have to figure that one out. All right. So you try to assign null to a variable that's not a null variant. Hmm. This is one of those errors that is going to be easier to see if we look in code view. So if we look in the source for this, and we look at the insert, statement where is the insert statement insert statement is going to be over here insert into division division ID abbreviation full name values question mark question mark question mark what's wrong with that statement let's go and let's copy this into another screen so we can look at just it. Maybe. What's wrong with that statement? Including I'm including the auto number key, right? And we shouldn't. Um, 
Should Visual Studio know about this when it creates that for us? Yeah, I think so. But it doesn't. So we can either sit here and lecture Visual Studio until it figures out and learns to change its ways, or we can just make the correction ourselves. So what we need to do is we need to do two things. We need to get rid of that. Well, three things, I guess. We need to get rid of this. We need to get rid of the one question mark. And then we need to get rid of the one insert parameter. So I'm going to go over here into the insert statement. I'm going to get rid of the division ID. I'm going to get rid of one of the question marks. And I'm going to get rid of, in the insert parameters, the first one that says I have a parameter for division ID. If you look at the insert statement, <coughs> update statement, and delete statement, you should have one parameter per question mark in the statement. So the delete has one question mark in it, and we have one parameter. The insert used to have three question marks and three parameters. We changed it to have two question marks and two parameters. And finally, the update has three parameters, and we have three parameters. Also, notice that they ought to be in order of the statement. So now we should be able to insert. So let's go in and insert. All right, remember, we go here, we click that, we click New. We go and we add something in. Insert. And did it work? It brought up engineering. Hmm. Brought up engineering because it's pulling up the thing with the query ID of one. Let's look at. Oh yeah, it did work. But that's awkward, right? What is awkward about this? We shouldn't have to go into a division to add a new division, right? Because after all, how would we add the first division if there had to be one there already for us to add one? So we should be able to go directly into add mode, all right, from this screen. So from this screen, there should be a link that says Add New Division. And when we click that link, we should go directly into this mode. All right. Now, if we click on a division, we should go into this mode. But if we click on the Add link, we should go directly into the mode that will allow us to add a new thing. The other thing that was weird is when we finished, we went back and displayed the original one that we pulled up. And we can kind of understand that, right? Because the query string has that ID. That's the ID that we use to retrieve this page. So, of course, it's going to bring that one up again. So there's two things I want to change about this right now. I want to be able to get to the ad page without having to go to the update, delete, whatever page, without selecting a division. And secondly, when I'm done inserting, I want to go back to the list and see that it got inserted. So let's handle these one at a time. All right? First thing, I need to sort of put this page into two modes. All right. One of the modes is to go into edit mode. And I'll go into edit mode if I have an ID. All right. So if this page gets past an ID, that's a signal that I should go into edit mode. All right. That's a signal that I should go into edit mode. If I don't get past an ID, well, let's see what happens. Let's go and just create a link 
on my division list. Let's create a link. details. Okay. Okay. So now I run this. And new division. The link I can see down there is division details on ASPX. If I click the link, though, something bad happens. I don't get anything. If I click the link this way and give it an ID, I get it. I get that division, and I can go and edit it. That's a little confusing, right? Let's look a little closer at the details view and let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. Does anyone care to guess what's going on here before I continue? If you don't know, that's okay. We'll talk about it in a minute. But what's going on here? Why is it that if I go to this screen and don't give it an ID, nothing appears? Whereas if I go to this page and I do give it an ID, it brings that up and it puts it into edit mode. Go ahead. Uh, the details view doesn't like the parameter or the SQL data source <coughs> doesn't have an ID or doesn't have any of the question mark. Okay. Things. What were you going to say? The uh, server controls aren't activated. Uh, no, that, that's, not, that's not necessarily true. Uh, they both are. In both cases, I'm going to the same page. The hyperlink in the grid is just like a hyperlink outside of the grid. So it doesn't matter the fact that it's in a grid. What matters is the fact that the one in the grid is passing an ID over. And the one in the, it's just plain on the page, is not passing an ID over. The way this query is currently written, The way this query is currently written on my details page, if I looked at my select statement, it's expecting a field called ID on the query string to fill in for division ID. That's what this page says. That, that first parameter is expecting to find it on the query string and is expecting it to be called ID. So when I just link to that on the page, there is no ID being passed. Therefore, this query looks and says, oh, no ID passed? I can't pull up anything. It doesn't know what to pull up. So it doesn't retrieve anything. And therefore, I'm left, left stuck with an empty details view. Okay? So how are we going to fix that? We can fix that this way. 
If we look at the details view, let's look at the properties of the details view. One of the properties is default mode. And there are three choices for default mode. Read only, insert, and edit. That's your three choices. Read only, insert, and edit. And this guy's default mode is set at read only. When the grid view is set in read-only, it's expecting there to be data in it. And if there isn't data in it, it just appears empty. So read-only will give us these options. Will give us the option to edit, new, or delete. That's what read-only means. Insert will give us, this expects there to be data. That's why this one works when we have data. When we pass the ID in, it works just fine. It doesn't work when we don't have data because it doesn't make sense to edit or delete when there's no data there. All right? Insert will give us the options between insert and cancel. Again, I may be getting these names wrong, but essentially that's what it is. You can insert or you can cancel. And edit gives us the option to update or cancel. So, it's okay when we go into, when we pull up something with an ID, it's okay to go in a read-only mode, because that gives them the option to edit or delete. We probably don't want to give them the option to insert in that mode. So probably going to get rid of that new. What we want to change, though, is if there's no ID, we want to put them in the insert mode. Okay? Let's look and let's change that grid view, I'm sorry, that details view to go automatically into insert mode. And let's see the impact it has. It'll fix one of our problems, but it will cause a different problem. If I go in and make the default mode of this guy insert, watch what happens. When I go and run this, I go here, ah, I'm able to insert a new one. That's great. All right. But when I click on one to edit, I also go into insert mode. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Here's our strategy. We don't always want to be in one mode or the other. Sometimes we want to be in one mode. Sometimes we want to be in another mode. If that second page came from this link where we have an ID on the query string, all right, then we want to go into read-only mode. If there's nothing on the query string, then we want to go into insert mode. So we need a little snippet of code on the page load event that looks to see how we got to this page. Did we get to it? from the link where we have an ID on the query string, or did we get to it from the other link when there isn't anything on the query string? Depending on that, we'll put ourselves in one mode or another. So, let's go into this page, page load event. see if there's anything on the query string.
if request. Query string. ID. Equals null. You put two equal signs because equal signs are used for two different things in programming. Okay. One is to compare, mm -hmm. to say, does this equal to that? Okay. One is to assign, where we say, make this equal that. So if you're saying make this equal that, you use a single equal. If you are comparing to say, does this equal that, you use two equal signs. Good question. Like here, we're saying make this equal that. So we use one. Here we're asking a question. Does this equal that? So if there's nothing there, we want to go into insert mode, right? Because we have no data to edit. We didn't get an ID on the query string. So I'm going to say details view one dot default mode equals and I forget how to do this insert so there's nothing on the query string we set the mode to insert otherwise we set the mode to read only. Oops. All right. So now let's see and let's make sure this works. So we're on the division list. We go and run this. We click this guy. We go over there and we're in read-only mode, right? We can see it and we can edit it or delete it or new. I'm going to get rid of that new in a, in a minute here, all right? But it's okay to be there for now. If I click this link, there's nothing on there in the query string, and we go into insert mode. So we can use one page to insert and update. It's just that we make that page aware of how, it, how you got to that page. Either you got to that page and you've given it an ID, or you've gotten to that page and not given it an ID. So depending on that, you put it in the right mode. Now here's something else I don't like about this, and we'll correct it. If I put in social sciences and click insert, puts me right back in insert mode. I can't really see that I, that that worked, all right? What I'd like to do is after I've successfully inserted, go back to this list. Because it did work, all right? Then we just didn't get any indication that it worked. How can I make it go back to that list after I've inserted it successfully? Pardon me? Just to use a redirect. Where am I going to put that redirect? After you click insert, so what do, you th do we think the name of that is going to be? We want to make sure, first of all, that the insert was successful, right? So we should check to see if there was an error inserting or not, because there could be a problem. For example, right now, there's no validation. So if I click this, I get a big old ugly air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the item inserted event. Again, past tense, because I want to make sure that we, tr we have tried to insert it. If we've tried to insert it and there's a problem, I want to display an error message. Otherwise, I want to redirect to the division list page. So let's go into the code view for this. And for my
my details view, I will say on item inserted equals create new event. I can then go there. I can look to see if there's an exception. If there is one, I can display a message. Otherwise, I can redirect. And you redirect by saying response. redirect and the, the thing is called division list so now if we go in It is, but it doesn't look to me like that. that's an extra one. Well, the, the one right above the F. <clears throat> one right above the F. Yeah, 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 gotcha. There we go. Thank you. So now we go to this page. We try to insert, and there's an error. We get that. If we successfully insert, we go back to that list. Notice how it doesn't take a lot to take this kind of clunky default behavior and make it to something that seems a lot more usable. You're really just, the framework got you 80% there. You're just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. Now, if you notice, we had put in validators for insert, for, I'm sorry, for edit mode, but the item template uh, is different for insert than edit. So we have to put in a different validator for item insert mode rather than edit mode. And that's a little bit of a pain, but again, it's done so much of the work for you, we can afford to do this little bit of cleanup duty. So I'm going to go in and edit these templates. Um, let's see. Edit templates. And I will add uh, in, for the abbreviation, the insert item template. I'll go and add a... say text box one 
I'll do the same thing for the other one. sense to me that if you bring up another one you could go directly into insert so I'm going to edit the template so that in read-only mode we can't go in and add a new one so we truly have two different modes we have a mode for inserting we have a mode for edit and delete now could you do this a different way absolutely but this is kind of the way I like to do it. Now, we've been working with really simple tables now, uh, so far. Division has what? Three columns in it. Two of them are just plain text and one of them is an ID. All right. What we'll do next time is we'll work with a more extensive table. One that has stuff in other tables. So, for example, a professor. A professor has a division associated with it. And we want to make sure that we only give the user valid professor, or I'm sorry, valid divisions to assign to a professor. So we can't use a plain old text box for that because someone could type in anything they want to in a text box. We'll have to give them a drop down instead where they can pick, or maybe radio buttons, I guess that would work too, depending on the kind of data. I think for something like divisions where there might be 10 or 12 of them, I think a drop down would probably be better. All right. But that will be our task next time, is we will go and we'll create, we'll do a similar thing for uh, a table that has more fields and has a relationship with another table. Are there any questions at this point? For lab nine, uh -huh. I believe it's requesting that the user be logged in to be able to edit stuff. Yes. So have we covered that? Well, that's a good question. How could we do something like that? Well, we could do that a couple different ways. All right? Are there any other questions? No, just kidding. <laughs> we can do that a couple different ways. And let's, let's talk about that. All right? One way is we could keep them from even getting to that page. All right. So, for example, I'm just going to add this functionality in. I don't know if it logically makes sense. Let's say you have to be logged in to get to this page. All right. I could put code in the page load event that checks to see if someone's logged in. How do we check to see if someone is logged in? We check it by looking to see if the session variable is set for them. So, what I'm going to do on this page, I'm going to get to the CS file. I'm going to put in a page load event that says if Session full name is null. Then I'm going to send them somewhere else. All right. I was thinking something along yep. those lines. Where do you want to send them? We could send them back to the list, maybe. We could send them to the login page. We could send whatever made sense. So in this case, just for... Just for laughs, we'll send them back to the list page. Okay, so if it's null, we're going to send them to that page. So 
We go and run this. Someone tries to go to that page. Huh? We send them back. So they're stuck on it. it doesn't you have work. it so if you click on one, a like, terrifying clown pops up? We could make a terrifying clown, clown pickup. We'd redirect them to ter terrifyingclown.aspx. That's what you say. Yeah, we could do that. Now, that's one way to do it. Another way is we could let them see the page, but simply disable the edit capability. All right? Let's do that with the division list. Again, I'm not saying this is logical. I'm just demonstrating how to do these things. All right? So, I'm going to go to the division list page. And... In the page load event, I'm going to say if you're not logged in, I'm going to change something with the grid view. So it is called grid view one dot This one's a little harder. What I have to do is to do is if they're not logged on, I'm going to make this first column invisible. The first column is the one that has the insert, update, and delete. So let's go here. There we go. We made that first column invisible. So that would be two different ways. One is you completely prohibit them from getting to that page if they're not logged in. Another one is to uh, another way to do it would be to let them see the page but remove that functionality. All right, so either one of them. I could have done the same thing, by the way, with this link. I could have made it invisible too if they're not logged in, so they can't even try to add. Right now they can try to add, but it'll take them back to this page. All right. So yeah, we didn't. How do I want to say this? I'm glad to answer any questions. I'm glad to talk about something in the lab that isn't there. One thing that I encourage you to do is at least try something. By now we have enough sense, or we should have enough sense, of what attributes are available and how we manipulate those, those, those controls and their attributes. Maybe to give it a shot. And if you can't get it, fine. By all means, ask. But think in terms of like, what attribute will I need to change about this to make it not editable? You know, um, what about this do I need to change to make it so that someone not logged in can't delete or, or whatever? And, you know, if you think with those terms, sometimes you can figure it out on your own. But again, if you're having difficulty, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to answer those questions. All right, what I'll do is I'll come back, I'll unlock the lab, come back, grab my files, and I'll be back over at lunch.